What's going on guys? This is Empty Box, and today we're not going to be talking about the gameplay. It's entirely irrelevant. What we are going to be talking about though is well, real world motorsports because as I'm sure many of you guys are out there as well, I'm a fan of many different racing series, so let's go ahead and start talking about them while we're around here on this YouTube channel. I think that'd be an interesting thing to do, so I'm going to go ahead and start doing that more often, uh, and I'll put all the videos into the playlist that way they're nice and convenient and easy for you guys to see various thoughts and opinions on things. So today, we're going to start off with, well... One of the hottest topics out there right now when it comes to racing, Formula One. So to begin this conversation, first I'd like to talk about my history as a Formula One fan. That way maybe you'll understand where I'm coming from and my thoughts on Formula One a little bit better. The first race that I remember watching was the 1999 French Grand Prix, which if you remember that race was exceptionally rainy. Extraordinarily rainy, a lot of chaos, a lot of shenanigans. Just really good, edge of your seat, what's going to happen next type race. That race is actually still on YouTube, and I actually was watching some of it this morning, and still exciting, even though I know who the winner was going to be. Fast forward a couple years, and my favorite driver from the kart series, which I followed closest, Juan Montoya, was shipped over into Europe to drive for Williams BMW. Naturally, I became a fan and started following Formula One a little bit closer. And I'd say really from probably about 2002 up to about halfway through the 2009 season, I actually didn't miss a Formula One race live on TV. Which, that's saying something because they happen at 6 in the morning here. Why? Why? But, uh, yeah, that's pretty strange. That's pretty out there, waking up at 6 o'clock on a Sunday morning just to watch a race on TV. But... That's kind of how Formula One is, or how it was. It was always that exciting. It was something different. It was something worth watching, in my opinion, because it was so, well, different. To me, Formula One was never about the racing. It was always about the engineering. And that's why, really, with 2014 and the ginormous regulation change that we have here in front of us, I have paid more attention. In fact, I don't think I've paid more attention to the rules changes from year to year anymore, ever. You know, I'm really interested in it. I've always been fascinated by the science of racing, more or less. You know, all the engineering that goes into it. And, you know, it's definitely exciting to watch, but at the same time, I feel like that engineering has all led to the cars becoming the same because of the fact that the regulations have become so very restrictive and really quite silly. Now before we get to 2014, we're going to talk about generic Formula 1 things that really just kind of have driven me away over the years and things I don't care for, which I think a lot of you guys will probably agree with. We will get to 2014 though, don't worry, it's obviously one of the biggest topics out there right now so we can't ignore that one. But first, let's talk about things that drive me crazy about Formula One. So before we talk about 2014, I'd like to talk about the things that have driven me away from being a hardcore Formula One fan. Well, we're going to start off with the biggest factor in me paying less attention to Formula One. And that is, well, the circuits. This very easily could turn into a rant. <laughs> I'm just going to say that right now. But the circuits are the biggest reason why I'm no longer as much of a Formula One fan as I used to be. It's just not exciting. You know, the calendar has become so generic and everything has chased this idea of creating racing in Formula One, which isn't possible. The series is intrinsically about not having good races. Every single team is out there to build their car to the point where they will curb stop the snot out of their competition and win every single race. That's the entire point. And there is, in theory, nothing stopping them from doing that other than the regulations. That is the entire point. But instead of that, we have these circuits that are designed to try and create good racing, good wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, where they fail miserably and just come off as boring, generic, uninspired, technical garbage. Let's take a look at the most egregious offender in Circuit of the Americas. 
What is that circuit known for? What is the defining feature? Turn one. A hairpin that's about 80 feet wide at the top of a hill. Boy, when I think of exciting corners in racing, I definitely picture 40 mile an hour hairpins. Yeah, definitely. Or alternatively, you have the tower thing that's like 8,000 feet high you can watch the races from. Not even part of the racetrack. Doesn't affect anything at all. Or alternatively, and this one's a stretch, but the ridiculously painted runoff room. <laughs> yeah, there's a ridiculous amount of runoff, but just the runoff room and the way they painted it just makes it even more ridiculous, if you ask me. But all joking aside, that's exactly what Formula One has become. The corners are uninspiring on these new circuits, and they're not exciting. And because of that, I don't want to watch them. Yeah, the racing was terrible back in the V10 era, and I fully understand that. And there was definitely some circuits that were just as boring as the circuits we have today. But at the same time, watching the V10 cars at Hockenheim before they butchered that place was always way more exciting than just the generic, boring Hockenheim that's like every other circuit on the F1 calendar because it's been changed into that. Because there's nothing exciting at all. It's just so yeah, woo. Whereas before it was like Hockenheim, these cars are doing like 220 miles an hour screaming through the forest and everything like that. It's just like awesome. Yeah, that's that's cool. It's a boring circuit. And most of the drivers would agree that it was a boring circuit. But at the same time it was always just a cool, unique thing. Whereas nowadays everything's become so similar and the circuits have become so close together and you know Nowadays, you don't see that big change, you know, from track to track, really. You don't see those really radical low downforce packages, except for Monza, which, you know, is always going to be low downforce because the only corners that there are are chicanes, but, you know, it's just so same-ish in the chase to create quality racing, which is never going to happen. Before we really get into 2014... There's the second thing that has turned me off of Formula 1, and that is the cars. They've just become so generic, much like the circuits. They don't really excite me as well as the fact that, perhaps even more so, they don't seem to have any defining traits. They're just faster or slower than the other ones. You know, for example, going back to the V10 era where you had the Williams BMW, huge power. You knew every single time that, you know, they showed up at Imola, Monza... Hockenheim, uh, Montreal, you knew they were going to be strong because they had huge amounts of power so they could run more downforce and go faster through the corners and claw back that performance advantage because they had a big engine that was putting out huge power. You know, it was a defining trait. You always knew that when those circuits came up, whoa, you're going to have to watch out for Williams because they're going to have a huge power. Yeah, the Ferrari's probably the best car in the field overall, but at those circuits, the balance shifted a little bit. Whereas nowadays... It just doesn't seem to happen nearly as much. It doesn't seem to be as much of an obvious difference. Now, yes, there's things like, you know, last year the Lotus was supposedly better on the tires, you know, for the first couple races, but, you know, really it, it just doesn't, doesn't feel the same. It just feels like every car is literally the same, only faster or slower. You know, even going back a little bit again, think about the minority you always saw those cars on the onboard and they always looked scary to drive because they were always like sawing at the wheel and just like doing anything but behaving properly nowadays even the slowest cars in the field just look so calm and composed they're slow but they're not fighting the driver trying to go crazy which yeah in the name of safety that's a good thing but at the same time I always liked watching the Minardi onboards because you could see the guy fighting the car and it's always exciting to see those guys struggle even though you felt so sorry for him because really Minardi was awesome I missed them that's another reason Formula 1 is no longer as interesting because there's no Minardi and Marussia does not count it's not the same so let's transition from that into the topic of 2014 there's a lot of things I like about 2014 and a lot of it does kind of restore my hope in Formula One and getting me reinterested in it. You know, I've paid much more attention this year to the differences in the cars than I have in 
you know, the last few years, certainly. And it's much more exciting now that we have a massive technical regulation shift that you know, has basically thrown everything out the book, more or less. You know, and really, the best thing about 2014, and this is going to sound very strange to say, but we're going to have teams struggling, and we saw that happen at Melbourne, you know. It, it, I love the fact that Sebastian Vettel had, like, no power at all. I love the fact that, like, three guys started from pit lane because their cars weren't quite working right. I want to see teams struggle. I want to see the differences in the car. I enjoy knowing that Renault is supposedly 50 to 70 horsepower down because, you know what? Those teams are going to have to deal with it. They're going to have to figure out how to make their car faster in spite of that. And that's the exciting thing. It's not about, ooh, good quality racing. It's all about the excitement from the engineering, which is what Formula One was about. Really what Formula One is still about, even though they've tried to make good racing. While I do think the cars are much more exciting this year, both in terms of the engineering challenge that has taken place, as well as the fact that they are more exciting to watch with the increased torque from the turbo engine, uh, as well as the electric motors, at the same time, I have a massive problem with the new regulations, and that is the sameness that is forced upon every single team because of the power plant restrictions. While the 2014 F1 cars are much more exciting from an engineering perspective as well as from a racing perspective, I think we'll see a lot more you know, passing actually occurring with you know, heavier cars as well as the increased torque from the power plants. So it should be more exciting. At the same time, I have to ask myself, you know, this major question that I keep coming back to every time I hear the words 2014 rule change in Formula 1. Why is everybody required to run a 1.6 liter V6 rev limited to 15,000 RPMs with this type of energy recovery? Now, I understand the need to you know, control the power output and control costs and all that. But at the same time, Formula One took a major hit in my book when they decided, well, we can't be going over 20,000 RPMs because people are spending way too much money. But at the same time, if, if you think about it, the budget hasn't really changed. They haven't really controlled costs at all. You know, the whole, oh, well, if they only can rev to 15,000 RPMs, they won't be, you know, so crazy advanced and everything like that. The, you know, the budgets will be smaller in theory. But if your idea was to control the budgets, then why are you making the most expensive power plant in Formula One history? Why? You know, and at the same time, why does everyone have to run that one specific configuration? What if someone wanted to run a four-cylinder that revved to, like, you know, 18,000 RPMs and had, you know, less reliance on electrical assistance? Providing they can hit that specific fuel number, why not with them? Why not with them? You know, what if someone wanted to run a diesel? God help us all. You know, suddenly you have differences in the cars, you have different approaches for the same engineering challenge, and I think we'd really be better for it. Now, some people will say, you know, 1.6 liter V6 is the solution that the you know, engineers would have come up with, anyways, but at the same time, what about the manufacturers? For example, you think about Ferrari, you know, they typically, not that they would here because I don't think it'd be really possible to get away with doing, but, you know, they always ran a V12 and that was the defining thing. The Ferrari V12 and the legendary sounds that it created, you know, we all remember that. You know, it was different from the rest of the pack. Nowadays, you know, with this rule change, you know, just ignoring the way the cars sound specifically, but they all sound the same, and there's no variety, and there's no personality, and, you know, really it's just, oh, it's got a Renault power plant in it, so it's probably going to blow up, rather than, whoa, that, that thing's got a BMW engine in it, so it's going to go like 9,000 miles an hour here, you know, or they just have lost their characteristics, and it just, you know, it's so same-ish, and it's just so generic, and really... I just don't care for the fact that they're rev-limited and forced into this same solution rather than just given, basically, here's your fuel figure that you need to hit for this race and go ahead any way you want to, which I think would be much better and much more exciting as well as I think would actually probably increase manufacturer involvement because we've seen somewhat of a similar type of approach over in sports car racing where 
you, know, you now have Audi, Toyota, and Porsche and LMP1 all with entirely different solutions trying to do the same exact thing and that that is exciting that is what Formula 1 needs that is what Formula 1 should have but they don't yeah yeah and saving the best for last the sounds going into a little bit more depth on that one well I don't understand why people are so upset with the sound you know people are saying oh well the sound of Formula 1 is gone well what is the sound of Formula 1 is the sound of Formula 1 a BRM H16 because it could be is the sound of Formula 1 a Cosworth DFV could be is it a Ferrari V12 could be is it one of the turbocharged engines from the 80s could be you know it's, it's like yeah I mean I, I understand why people are upset and you know it's quieter and I can definitely agree with that uh, but at the same time it's like there is no sound of Formula 1 it's just the sound of the engines and the engines don't sound as good this year you know yeah simple as that although I will also say I was never a fan of the V8 engine note I did like the V10s but not the V8s they just seem like loud noises <laughs> more or less sorry guys but I had to demonstrate it you know I, I just think that people are making too much out of it and you know I do believe that you know here in a couple of weeks we won't be talking about it at all you know really watching the race it, they actually did sound better from trackside cameras on TV and everything like that than the V8s in my opinion although when they did do onboard shots the thing just sounded god awful terrible but hopefully that's just because of where they position the microphone or whatever on the cars and maybe it needs to be adjusted from previous years to make it sound better and more attractive and appealing but I, I just don't see the need to be so upset and people are saying it's you know too quiet now well if you look at the races previously you'd always see people with their ear protection on so that way they didn't go deaf now you don't see that as much you know you didn't see that too much in Melbourne comparatively well obviously with the ear protection it's going to muffle the sound of the engines a little bit going to try and bring that volume levels down to where you don't go deaf that's why they call it ear protection right whereas now if you're not wearing ear protection you know that volume difference might not be as much as you actually expected you know that said yeah they probably are still on too much on the quiet side and they don't have the most exciting engine noise in history but we'll survive we will survive so there you go. There's my thoughts on Formula One. If you like these videos, make sure you click that like button. Uh, again, I'll put these all into a playlist, and that way, as we go on, you can get my topics and thoughts on various things within motorsports and uh, relevant topics to the time. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Right, bye.